What's up, everybody? It's Peter Tragos, the lawyer you know. And on this channel, we break down the trials and cases you care most about so you can understand how the American civil and criminal justice system works. And we try to make sure you understand what your rights are in every situation, which is why we try to walk you through the entire legal process while also answering your insightful questions along the way. And while it's not legal advice, it's always exciting. So buckle up for another episode of The Lawyer You Know. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday afternoon, four o'clock, a little later than usual. We're going to try to keep full steam ahead, though, on this, because as I read some of these requests for discovery a little bit closer, there's a lot of interesting things that can be garnered from this. We can get an idea as to what Brian Koberger is looking for in these discovery requests. Um, there's a lot of speculation and questions around this case. The rumor mill is going crazy. We know that. Well, guess what? Some of it has actually turned out to be true, whether it's a Reddit request or um, a, a Reddit request, whether it's uh, a report of his mental health information, whether it's a report about his uh, background in school. Does he have any criminal history? Is he to, to blame for some of the other things going on? If any of that is true, and if law enforcement or the prosecution team has any of that information, a lot of these discovery questions are going to force them to turn it over to the defense. So we will get to which questions specifically point to which theories and potential evidence and things that we have all heard on mainstream media, on YouTube, some of you have sent it in, um, so there's a lot of questions surrounding this case on what's real, what's not, what's here, what's going to be evidence at trial. So that's something that we are absolutely going to discuss throughout today's show when we go through these discovery requests. Someone also sent me in another uh, body cam footage thing at the house, Kaylee Gonsalves, another complaint, law enforcement showing up again. So in the theory that that's one of the reasons DM did not call the cops, we're going to watch it and, and see some of the threats that were made in this video as well to provide more context to that. Thank you to everybody that has subscribed. Hit that like button if you haven't already on this video. So everybody knows what we're talking about here. Um, and I see some things in the chat that are going to make me laugh. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But before we do that, um, I said this weekend, Friday technically is the weekend. We're going to give away a few memberships today. Probably maybe when we hit, if we get to three or 4,000 in the chat, when it's uh, starting to get to those numbers, we will start giving away some memberships and we'll give away some memberships in some future videos as well to celebrate hitting 175,000 subscribers, which is insane. Um, yes, I am a lawyer, not a journalist. <laughs> I had to make sure that that was clear. Jason, JB was like, us, are we journalists or us journalists? I was like, you're the journalist, man. I'm not, I'm not the journalist. And he laughed. And he and I have talked about that before. So it was, uh, it was it was all fun and games when I was doing that with him. So, um, okay, here we go. Charlotte's webbing gifted memberships are chosen randomly by YouTube. Make sure your gifting settings are on. There you go. Thank you, Charlotte. Yeah. Cause I don't know how it all works, but I know we're gifting some memberships throughout this episode. So make sure it's all turned on. I have seen people tell me Hulu, ABC, Dateline, NBC are all doing, um, specials on, the Idaho murders case. Well, your boy, Peter Tragos, yours truly, had some whispers of this because none other than Dr. Phil, Kathy, uh, even on Dr. Phil, yes, Dr. Phil called me and I uh, was, was in the running to come on the Dr. Phil show and was talking with one of the executive producers. They ended up going with a different direction. There was an attorney on it. It was not me. But maybe, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll be hanging with Dr. Phil. Um, uh, Dr. Phil always makes me think of Uncle Phil. Um, but anyways, so yes, everybody's covering this stuff. It is interesting. It, even watching that episode was some interesting stuff going on there. I think it's it's caught the interest of the nation for sure. No doubt about it. True Crime with Shannon. Welcome to the membership crew. Elizabeth Higgins, before we get into this discovery, I think we're actually going to start with the body cam footage because it's short. And then we're going to, the bulk of the video is going to be about the discovery. Um, Elizabeth Higgins, who all presents evidence at the probable cause hearing both sides can, but most of the time the state presents the bulk of the evidence. Thank you, Andrea Taylor for starting off so many videos with super chats like this. 
without further ado, let's watch this body cam footage together and see what we can learn from it. This one's only one minute, so it's real short. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the entirety of everything that was said, but I think we will get the gist uh, from watching this one. And people sent me some different variations of this. I thought this was the easiest way to kind of get the gist of it would be to watch this one. So let's watch it together. Normal speed, so you don't have to worry about it being too fast. How are you? Actually, sorry, it's not on the right sound. Let's fix that. All right, here we go. That's Kayla Gonzalez coming out of the house now. Good, how are you? Good, is this your place? Yeah. Perfect, you know why we're here? Um, I assume noise. Noise, yeah. Yeah. She assumes noise again. Um, okay, I guess there's going to be some verbiage on here. I didn't know about the text, but she says noise, which shows it's happened a couple times. Big speaker right there. Yeah. Nothing against having a party. Once neighbors start calling in, then we have an issue. Fair. Uh, you go to school? Uh, yeah. Okay. What year? Senior. Senior. Okay. So I'll tell you the same thing I told them. You probably know the drill. August of 2022. So just a couple months prior to the crimes being committed. All right. Actually, no. Oh, okay. So usually, at least for me, I'll give you a- He said, you know the drill, right? And she said, actually, no. So now he's going to explain to her what the drill means. Verbal warning. Okay. Uh, once I have neighbors calling in, your music's too loud. You're disturbing the peace. Yeah. Nothing against having parties. Nothing against having people over who are overage to drink. Mm -hmm. But again, once we start disturbing the neighbors, then we've got an issue. Yeah. Is this 1122 here? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I'd much rather you spend that 300 bucks on beer or something fun than yeah, a noise yeah. ticket, right? Yeah, thank you. I okay, so he talks about if he has to come back. So he gives a warning. If he has to come back, it's going to be a $300 ticket for a noise a noise ticket, whatever that means. And you should go spend your $300 on beer, whatever. But that threat of more complaints of law enforcement showing up at your house could have absolutely come in to affect when DM decided not to call the cops, right? And this is what we're talking about, context. Things that could happen that we don't know about that could explain her actions that night, which is why we're not going to jump to conclusions. But it's also fair to say that a defense attorney is going to ask her questions, tough questions, about what she saw, how she saw it, and what she did afterwards. Appreciate it. Yeah. That being said, warnings, don't do it again. Yep. I'd hate to come back in a few hours and then have to issue that. So yeah. any questions for me? No. All right. Have okay. a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So that was the body cam footage. Um, and, you know, that, that just is a little – piece to there's going to be so many different things that are going to come into play in this case, whether it's going to be videos, whether it's going to be, um, DNA, whether it's going to be forensic evidence, my mic just keeps falling on me today. Uh, whether it's going to be forensic evidence, whether it's going to be cell phone tower pinging, whatever it may be. Um, yes, Katrina, I did see this. Somebody sent me 10 to life, gave you a huge shout out today. I saw that I went on, I watched the clip. It was awesome. Uh, she was so nice about it. Uh, played a little clip from one of my other videos. That's really cool. And I guess what she does is this is annoying the crap out of me. I can't even tell you how annoying it is that this is happening. Okay. Um, so she played a clip from one of my other videos and was just talking about how she's like, Oh, it's a cool channel. He's a lawyer breaking down this case. If you want to listen to that. So that was cool of her to do that. Um, she's got a huge YouTube channel. She's, she's a champ here in the YouTube sphere. Um, so that was cool. Um, all right, let's see. Dr. Phil missed out, Carmela said. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, saw you on her channel. Okay, so a lot of people are coming over from 10 to Life. So if you are from 10 to Life, put 10 to Life in the comments. Um, and if you like true crime stuff, check out her channel. If you guys haven't seen it. Oh, a lot of 10 to Life's here. Okay. All right, cool. Very cool. All right, so... Let's get to this discovery, okay? And yeah, I just have a t-shirt on because I was wearing like this nice sweater today and it, like Florida always does, got so hot and so I'm sweating in my office. Um, so let's get to the discovery, okay? And somebody's saying Grizzly shouted me out too. Well, Grizzly not only shouted, well, there may be some other things coming there. We'll see. We'll see what happens. A lot of these true crime, I give them credit, right? So the true crime people, some of them, some of them go too far. Some of them don't, whatever. I haven't seen a ton of, of the, uh, of the true crime stuff. Oh, hold on. This is funny. I got, this just, just reminded me of something funny. Um, uh, some of them go too far. Some of them don't. They have a lot of followings. People like to discuss this stuff. They like to dive in. They like to speculate. It's part of what they do. That's totally fine. Um, I don't condemn stuff like that. I think it's everybody likes discussing different things. The only thing I condemn is jumping to conclusions 
just being nasty to people, trying to hurt people uh, via social media and stuff. So that's, that's what I would not uh, want to do necessarily. Um, but these channels are cool. And I think it's, I give them a lot of respect and um, for going on to other, bringing in other professionals and peoples, whether it's their channel or they come on their show specifically and talk about it. Um, I do think it's cool that they do that and add a lot of context to what they also bring to the table. Um, all right, let's get to this discovery. Then we got some funny stuff we'll talk to. I'll answer questions, of course, but I feel like it's already been too long and we haven't gotten to this discovery yet. So I want to get to it. Um, all right. Comes now uh, to the prosecuting attorney. Comes now, Brian C. Koberger, by and through their undersigned attorney of record and Taylor, public defender, and pursuant to Rule 16 of the Idaho Rules of Criminal Procedure, the Idaho Rules of Evidence, the 4th, 5th, 6th, 8th, and 14th Amendments to the Constitution of the United States, and Articles 1, 2, 13, 17 of the Constitution of the State of Idaho, hereby request disclosure of information, evidence, and materials. Information, evidence, and materials. That's what they're looking for here. Uh, pursuant to the rule, including but not limited to the following information, evidence, and materials. Here we go. Number one. Okay, and each one of these is very important, and we're going to talk about what specifically they're asking for, what they might get, what that we have discussed on the channel already would be subject to any of these questions. Number one, statements of the defendant. Permit the defendant to inspect a copy or photograph of any relevant written or recorded statements made by the defendant or copies thereof within the possession, custody, or control. Control is an important one there, important one there of the state, the existence of which is known or is available to the prosecuting attorney by the exercise of due diligence. So the, the prosecutor does not have to have this in front of them. They don't have to have taken this statement, but if it's easy for them to get, they've got to go get it and produce it to the defense. Um, the existence of which is known or is available to the prosecuting attorney by the existence of due diligence and also the substance of any relevant oral statement made by the defendant whether before or after the arrest to a peace officer, prosecuting attorney, or his agent, and the recorded testimony of the defendant before a grand jury, which relates to the offense charge. So we don't have a grand jury here, but what would this include? Okay. Because you may think Brian Coburn didn't make any statements, right? But number one, uh, purple X, you can use a little clip of me in your, uh, in your video. Don't worry about it. Um, and yes, everybody hit that like button. So, what everybody may be saying things like he didn't make any statements, right? But what would this include? This could include the body cam footage from the stops. If the state has that, they have to turn that over here. Number two, this could include if in fact he did say it, did you arrest anybody else over in Pennsylvania? A lot of people saying he said something like that. Well, if it's true and the state has some kind of proof of it, they need to produce it to the defense. Number three, right? Any statements we don't know about that he could have made to law enforcement, right? That would be included here in the defense too. They might not know about it. He might not even remember, right? It's probably a pretty traumatic event that he's been going, um, going through here. Okay. But number four, which is really interesting to me. He was flown from Pennsylvania to Idaho. And I... I have heard, I'll say, and read that he was described as a chatty Cathy. Law enforcement officials on the plane with him, hours, does anybody know how long the flight is? 2,000-ish miles, a couple hours probably, maybe two hours, I don't know. So did he sit there silent or did he say certain things? I've heard he was talking to law enforcement officers and he was saying things to himself under his breath. So... If he did make statements on that flight that they have record of, meaning recordings or anybody did a police report post-flight, which is what would happen, they would say, hey, he said this, that, and the other. Four hours, somebody said. Five hours. Okay, so it's a couple hours. I don't think it's 10 hours. Um, but a couple hours flight. So if that's the case, and he made any statements there that they plan on using, that would be included in number one. So that's why it's important to ask these broad questions, but they can't be too broad, right? They can object to overly broad, overly broad. A very common objection in discovery is overly broad, unduly burdensome, and not reasonably believed to lead 
to discoverable material. That's legalese for this is too broad. You're asking, this is a, not a wild goose chase. So you have to hone them in enough. And I think statements of the defendant does that, but it's broad enough to where they say basically any statement he could have made at any point, including traffic stops, including plane rides. It doesn't have to be an interrogation, which is what most people think of when you think of a defendant's statement. Number two, this was the big one that was sent to me a lot and I've already commented on. I haven't commented, I think, on the other 16, but we'll talk about number two a little bit more. Statements of a co-defendant. Any written or recorded statements by a co-defendant and the substance of any relevant oral statement made by a co-defendant, whether before or after arrest, in response to interrogation by any person known by the co-defendant to be a peace officer or agent of the prosecuting attorney or which are otherwise relevant to the offense charged. This does not necessarily mean there is a co-defendant. It does not mean there is not a co-defendant. This is a standard question in standard language. But that being said, it is not asked in every single case. Now, I don't know if this defense attorney asks it in every single case. She could, and the answer could very simply be none. But if there is a co-defendant, a potential co-defendant, they would have to give the statements of that co-defendant. I expect the answer to this to be none, and I'm going to continue to expect that as long as law enforcement and everybody says, this is the guy, he did it alone, this is what the evidence is showing at this point. The flight was 10 hours. Oh, it's because it's a single engine plane. Okay, thank you for more explanation, Susan. So a lot of hours, a lot of hours, okay? I, yeah, FD Food Fairy. I'm not going to say necessarily what I've read that he was talking to himself, but I did hear that there were a lot of statements made. Now, whether or not they're going to be used, who knows? Cynthia, yes, let's get that up to 3,000 likes. Come on, let's get that 3,000 likes up for number three. And again, with the co-defendant stuff, if I was the defense attorney, it would probably be in my arsenal of, of decisions that I'm making of part of my defense is being, could one person really have committed this crime? So that's why the interest in this co-defendant or was there anybody else is kind of important here. All right. Uh, number three, defendant's prior record. A copy of the defendant's prior record, if any, as is then or maybe become available to the prosecuting attorney. So you would think, why would they ask for this? Wouldn't Brian Koberger know? Sometimes criminal defendants forget about things, right? We have heard reports that there is no criminal history with Brian Koberger, so this one may also be none. But if the state has something, they can't hide the ball. They have to let the defense know here is his record. And usually we want the certified judgment and sentence. That's what's called JNS is what we call it. We want the certified judgment and sentence, what he was convicted of. Um, and if their rules are similar to Florida, it has to be a felony um, or a crime of moral turpitude. If you're going to use it to impeach him, if he's planning on taking the stand or, or uh, testifying in the case. All right. Number four, let's get 4,000 likes for, uh, even though there's not 4,000 people in here. It's for number four documents and tangible objects. Permit the defendant to inspect and copy all books, papers, documents, photographs, tangible objects, and copies of portions thereof, which are in the possession or control of the prosecuting attorney and which are material to the preparation of the defense or intended for use by the prosecutor as evidence at trial or obtained from or belonging to the defendant. Okay. So all the stuff they were taking out of the house, all the stuff they took out of his Washington State University apartment, all the stuff they took from the parents' house, anything they took, anything they're planning on using as evidence or may use it as evidence, they're asking for either copies of it, pictures of it, or so that they can come take a copy of it um, or they can come look at it. We've had cases where we've gone to the FBI headquarters, dug through all the evidence. Um, we have you know suitcase. We had one case where suitcases were filled with notebooks and clothes and all sorts of stuff that... They felt like proved our client's crime. We were able to go, go through it, copy it, talk to our expert about it. So they want a chance to do all of that with any documents or tangible evidence. This would include the murder weapon if they had it. Number five, reports <coughs> uh, of examination, reports of examinations and tests. Permit the defendant to inspect and copy any results or reports of physical or mental examinations and of scientific tests or experiments made in connection with a particular case that are in the possession, custody, or control 
of the prosecuting attorney or the existence of which is known or is available to the prosecuting attorney by the existence of due exercise of due diligence. You'll notice a lot of the same themes. It's not just does the prosecutor have it. It's not just, is it already in their possession, but the prosecutor officers, agents, and not just do they have it, but is it easy for them to go get it? Or if they did their due diligence, would they be able to get it? Okay. So this could be DNA testing, forensic testing, video experts. A lot of this stuff we saw in the Daryl Brooks trial. If these experts are running tests, doing examinations, whether it's on Brian Koberger or on some piece of evidence, they're entitled to, and they want a copy of it. And that's what this question is asking for. All right. Question number six, state witnesses provide a written list of names, addresses, phone numbers, and or other reasonable means of contact for all persons. This is not just witnesses that are going to be listed on the witness list, right? For all persons having knowledge of relevant facts who may, who may be called by the prosecuting attorney as witnesses at trial together with an NCIC report and a Spillman report of any such persons. I'm not positive what a Spillman report is or NCIC report, but I think it may have to do with, do they have any uh, criminal history? Um, but I, I should look into that. So anybody that may have relevant knowledge and if they, this is a discovery document, Claudia requests from Brian Koberger's attorney um, from the state discovery requests. So when we talk about these witnesses, if the state doesn't list somebody and then later they call them as a witness, they're not going to be able to call them as a witness at trial if they don't put them on notice unless there's really good reason for it. But if later on they're like, oh, this person does have information, we didn't know about it. Now that we know about it, we're letting you know, that's fine. Um, that's fine. All right. Uh, provide the statements made by the prosecution witnesses. So this is going to include the surviving roommates that were still at the house and anybody else that may have information in this case. And it's they want uh, statements made by the witnesses or prospective witnesses made to the prosecuting attorney or their agents or to any official involved in the investigatory process. This includes statements to employees of the prosecutor's offices, such as witness coordinators and all members of any law enforcement agency. Again, being broad, encompassing everybody. We don't want to miss anybody that may have spoken about this case. That's going to be really, really important. All right. Question number seven, expert witnesses. Okay. This is always an interesting discussion as to who's considered an expert witness. What do they want? Provide a written summary or report of any testimony that the state intends to introduce pursuant to these rules of the Idaho rules of evidence at trial or hearing. The summary provided must describe the witnesses opinions, the facts and data for those opinions and the witnesses qualifications. Somebody asked about Daubert, whatever standard they have, if it's Daubert, they will have to run those opinions, those facts, that data, and the qualifications through the analysis to see if they need to challenge any of these expert witnesses. The underlying facts or data that form the basis of any expert testimony pursuant to the Idaho rule, they want that too. Disclosure of the expert's opinions regarding mental health shall also comply with the requirements. So you can't just say, I've got this cell phone ping extra uh, expert. You've got to say, I have a, a na National Crime Information Center. Yeah, that's, that's the criminal records database. Yeah, TP. That's what I thought. So that they have to, usually that's what happens when they provide a witness list. They have to provide if they have a criminal history. Um, okay. So when we talk about expert witnesses, they not only have to list the expert witnesses, they not only have to list their area of expertise, but what are their opinions? How did they get to this cell phone data? How did they test the DNA? We got the testing above, but we want what their opinions are. How do they know it's Brian Koberger's family or whatever the connection is to Brian Koberger? How do they know that based on the DNA? The defense is entitled to it, and this question would cover it. So if they don't provide it, then they're not going to be able to use it later. Number eight, police reports. This one's self-explanatory. Provided the defendant all reports, all memoranda, all rough notes. So this is interesting. Some law enforcement agencies don't have their officers even provide rough notes because they know they could be discoverable. Sometimes they do. Sometimes notes that are written contemporaneously that differ a little bit from the actual police report can be a huge part at trial. You took this note down. Why didn't it make it into your report? Or the age-old question. Uh, you put all of the really important stuff in your report, right, officer? Yes. Well, why did you leave this out? Did you not think this was important? Well, yes, I did. But it, well, you just said you put all the most important stuff in your report. You can hear the cross-examination if you've ever watched a trial. And that's legit. And that does happen. So that's why it's important to get all the rough notes or field notes. Sometimes there are diagrams made. I've had death cases where the diagrams law enforcement officers made of a parking lot accident that killed my client were totally wrong. And it was a civil case. 
And we had to unfortunately tear the law enforcement officer to shreds because they felt bad for the person that hit my client. So they didn't want to give him a ticket. So our expert had to redo all of that. And during the cross-examination, we went through their report and their notes and their plot points just didn't make any sense. So that's why we want to make sure we get all that information in the discovery process, which is what uh, his lawyer is asking for now. G digital media recordings, audio and video files, release to the defendant digital media that may or may not contain protected information as defined by this rule. The prosecuting attorney must state whether the di disclosure contains protected information. You can't just say this is protected. You have to say what it is. Unredacted digital media, release the unredacted digital media to defense counsel for the purpose of expediting a resolution in a case prior to trial or hearing. Redacted digital media, provide redacted versions of digital media along with a written explanation of the information that was redacted. Basically, you have to explain what you redacted out and why. Um, if the prosecuting attorney determines the digital media contains protected information requiring redaction prior to the disclosure. So this could be cell phone videos, text messages that they have, um, and they can redact names or birthdays or social security numbers or passwords or bank account numbers or email addresses, protected private information like that will usually be redacted out. But if you have videos, clips, um, text messages that you plan on using, that could, this could also include pings and things like that. Uh, did he get onto the Wi-Fi? Emails, when did he send them? Make sure you disclose all of this to the defense. So make sure any digital media that has been recorded that you plan on using, the defense wants it. Uh, number 10, search warrants. We're going to take a break after page three here so I can catch my breath and answer some questions. Uh, search warrants. Provide all documentation in support of any search warrant issued in connection with this case. Applications for search warrants, whether granted or denied, right? So if they wanted to search something and the search warrant was denied, the defense wants a copy of that. All affidavits, declarations, and materials in support of a search warrant all search warrants and all search warrants returns and inventory. So what did you get from the search warrant? They want to know that. What did they find when they went to, and this includes the search warrant and all the supporting documentation for the Washington state residents of Brian Koberger that is still currently sealed. We'll eventually see that, but they want that search warrant. They want all the documents that came with that search warrant and they want an inventory of everything they got from that search warrant. Everything that it'll look just like the probable cause affidavit, right? What we, what we found out, that was submitted to get the arrest warrant for Brian Koberger to be similar to that. Explain why they need this search warrant, what they've done to get to this point and what they expect to find potentially in this search warrant um, or in this search. They want all of that. They want all the documentation. They want all the statements made by law enforcement. And what's really interesting to this or about this is all of this different evidence can really come down to comparing what this officer said in this search warrant with what this officer said in the police report, right? Those can be two very different things. Um, and to me, that is, that is very, very interesting. Let me shoot a text here real quick. Um, because I don't think I'm going to be done in time. All right. Number 11, exculpatory evidence, Brady evidence, we call this. Provide to the defendant all material evidence within the scope of Brady versus Maryland, specifically any and all favorable or exculpatory evidence, information, and documents in possession of the prosecuting attorney's office or other agency or person available to the prosecution through due diligence. So... A lot of you already know what Brady evidence is. If you have anything that's good for the defense, you have to turn it over. If you know somebody else was in the house at the same time, you have to turn it over. If you talk to the DoorDash person, you have to turn it over because they could have had the same motive or opportunity or intent to commit this crime. I don't know that they did. I'm just saying if you have that kind of evidence, number 11 would include it. Okay. Okay. So that will be handled now. So we got a little more time together. See, that's good. You can create more time when you've got a team. That's what's so uh, important about a team at a law firm with really great lawyers that can handle these cases, that know what they're doing, that are you know board certified or barred in other states. It's, it's cool. So, all right, that's what we did there. Pete's going to handle that. All right. So to take a pause here and answer some questions, there are still seven more we are going to get to.
a lot of new members here, Brandy H, SFD. Some of these may have been gifted from us, right? Because we've turned on the gifted memberships since we hit 4,000 people in the chat. Um, Kate Carpenter, is it even possible for BK to get a fair trial anywhere? I feel like there's so much reasonable doubt. Um, I think I've heard mixed, right? Some people think it's a slam dunk. Some people think there's a lot of reasonable doubt. So I do think it's possible for him to still get a fair trial. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be in Laytalk County, but we're going to, we're going to eventually find the answer to that. Uh, Pam Frenchman, Tyler Feller. I heard his interview this morning. Yes. We were on his show earlier today as well. If you guys want to go check that out, talking the Idaho case. Itsy Fitzy. Thanks so much for the gifted membership. You are welcome. Feeling the love. Uh, Brandy H, super sweet to give memberships. Thank you, Brandy. It was an idea from the subscribers and stuff that already do this on their own gift memberships all the time. Dr. Scrolls is also a member. Lisa Boris, the small plane stopped one hour north of me in Champaign, Illinois to refuel on the way to Idaho. Yeah, it sounds like it was a long flight. Uh, Stina G, does the defense have to disclose evidence and witnesses to the prosecution in a criminal case like this. Yes, they will have to answer their own discovery questions, but the defense just has so much less than the prosecution does in cases like this. So it's very, very different. Uh, Louise Hutchinson is a new member. Ice Queen is a new member. Disney Cosmo is a new member. And to answer that other question as well, we've seen in other cases, you have to do a notice of alibi. If you're going to do that, you have to do, you have to do certain notices that allow the state to understand what you're going to do. If you're going to do an insanity plea, I know they don't have that in Idaho, but there is certain uh, mental health things that they can do and arguments they can make, which you do have to put the state on notice. If you're going to make that argument that they couldn't have formed the mental um, criminal culpability. Tori, we're going to get Peter to the Boone trial, 177 K if you don't know what this is about, if we hit 200K before Sarah Boone's trial is over, I'm going to head over and sit in the courtroom, take a look at the jury, give you guys some uh, in-court understanding of what's happening in that case and be able to see it actually in court. It might be interesting, especially with the lawyers involved in that case. Ashley, I'm in Tampa for my niece's event. It's kind of cold. I know. I started out with a sweater on. Now it's hot, though. It's like got to be 70 degrees outside. It's supposed to get cold tonight and through the weekend, though. Adam Lewis is a new member. So is Chloe. And we are doing a members-only chat and video next week that's going to be different than every, anything we've ever done. Don't feel like you have to join the membership. You're not missing out on any legal breakdowns or any um, explanation of rights or anything like that. That's the point of the channel, to get that out, let the public know about it, answer your questions. It won't be like that. It's more of just a chill, behind-the-scenes, personal talk, hangout, stuff like that. So if you're into stuff like that, then join. Uh, Jules Jones, thanks for the super sticker. Mandy McAllister, welcome. Uh, Poppy, does the prosecution have the defendant's cell phone in? If not, why? I don't know the answer to this. Um, I would assume the answer is yes. Probably when they searched incident to arrest of his parents' house, his cell phone was probably there. They probably got it at that point and they've probably been doing testing on it. And again, some of these discovery questions we've already read would include the testing and what they pulled from the cell phone and the digital data and the media data that they've gotten would include a lot of that. So the defense is asking for copies of that if the state does have it. I would think they do have it. If not, if he destroyed it or ditched it or something like that, then maybe they wouldn't have it. Gifted memberships are given randomly. You need to be active in the chat in order to be eligible for memberships. Barbara, okay, I didn't know that. I think you also have to like the video. I don't actually know that that's true. Uh, Chloe, BK is able to have a public defender because of his income. I'm assuming because he's a PhD student, but how can he have these very qualified experts? Are those covered by the state or his parents? Thank you. They are covered by the state. So they are able to provide him with a defense. And if you, uh, if any of you guys followed the Nicholas Cruz penalty phase trial here in Florida. He was the Parkland shooter. Uh, he pled guilty. And then they went to trial whether or not to give him the death penalty or life. And he ended up getting life, which was a win for him if you want to look at it that way. They talked about how more money was spent on that case than just about any case in Florida. And he was already guilty. He already pled guilty. But they had he has constitutional rights and they provided him the best defense they could. Now, does that always happen? No. And it's really sad when it doesn't happen. But we should provide criminal defendants the best uh, defense we can, even if it's court-appointed lawyers and experts paid for by the state. Now, you never know. Some experts can take discounts if they want to and things like that. Uh, Michelle Zona is a new member, as is Susan Bushy. 
Carlos Jones, thank you. 10 to Life channel talked you up today. Yeah, I saw that. So cool. I mean, that's so cool and so nice of her. Um, people were sending it to me in my DM. She's got a huge following. USS J4 Brawley, last minute Lori and Sharon Gonzalez are all new members. Huge influx of members. I hope the video turns out as cool as I want it to uh, next week. We'll see how it goes. April Yates, not a t-shirt. Yes, I know how embarrassing I'm wearing a t-shirt. Um, this also brings up some other very serious conversations, okay? Because I know people take this seriously. I am a lawyer. Some people don't think I'm a lawyer. I'm a real lawyer, practicing lawyer, catastrophic injury, personal injury, civil trial lawyer. Our firm also does criminal defense. Um, we're a mid-sized firm in the Tampa Bay area, okay? So even though I'm wearing a t-shirt today, that is possible. Even though I have long hair, that is possible. A lot of people at my house, the lighting was terrible. We're working on the, the stuff there. Um, we're going in the chat. And we're getting upset and asking a question of, do I have a unibrow? Okay. And I, I usually don't. Sometimes it can get close. You guys can take a closer look. So I apologize that I didn't answer that question. I saw that it was asked so many times, but very serious business about appearance and what people look like on this show. So I just want to clear that up. And sorry for wearing a t-shirt, April. Kendra K. Ducati, CPA. So many professionals and people with different interesting backgrounds and experiences in here. It's so cool. All right, let's get back to this document. I don't really know why I think I get arrest when I answer questions because I don't. All right, number 12. Inducement. Provide to the defendant all documents pertaining to the existence and substance of any payments, promises of leniency, preferential treatment, or other inducements or threats made to prospective witnesses within the scope of USB Giglio. So that's funny. Like they're going to admit that they had to threaten a witness. That's not going to happen. But did you have to pay a witness to show up? Is it an expert witness? One of these roommates, maybe they had a DUI or underage drinking or something like that. And it's like, did you make that go away to get them testify to testify or give you something good in this case? They want all the information on all the witnesses in case you ever wonder, right? How does everybody know that this person had been arrested of a felony or how do they know that this person um, got their sentence cut in half to testify. Well, they find out in discovery by filing questions just like this one. 13, identification. Disclosure of whether a defendant or any other person was identified by lineup, show up, photo spread, or similar identification proceeding relating to the offense charged and production of any pictures utilized or resulting therefrom and the names, addresses, and telephone numbers of all identifying witnesses. Okay, so this is important. Was he identified in a photo lineup? Or was he identified in a regular lineup? And who identified him? The only person I could think of that would be able to do that would be DM, based on the bushy eyebrows and the build and things like that. And if they did do that, they produced that to the defense. And if they used pictures, right, and they set up six pictures or 10 pictures or, or used a photo book, whatever it may have been, produce those photos. Why is that important? Well, we want to make sure it was fair. I've actually done this before. I'll tell you that story, which is kind of cool. Um, but if they put a picture of five people that look like Michael Jordan and a picture of me and ask them to pick out the person that you saw, obviously she's going to pick out me if it was me or vice versa. If they put five pictures of me and one picture of Michael Jordan and the person saw somebody that was six foot six, uh, with a bald head, it's like, that's Michael Jordan. Obviously, clearly it's not this guy that's, you know, 5'10 with long hair who's white versus a black person or versus a Hispanic person or versus an Asian per person. You can't have photo lineups of all of one race and then a different race of the defendant, right? And we've had trouble with that in the past. And that's why this type of stuff comes up is because it's been that bad before, literally. One black person in a photo lineup or one Hispanic person in a photo lineup with brown skin or somebody with light skin or somebody with pale skin or whatever it is totally different shades of skin or ways that they look or hairstyles or whatever it may be to make it so obvious who the person is that the prosecutor wants them to point out, which is why we have to produce what that photo lineup was. What did the people look like they were picking at? Were they all from 5'10 to 6'2 athletic build with bushy-ish eyebrows to see if she could really differentiate? Because that's all really important. Who was in this photo lineup? Um... All right, that was identification. Evidence pursuant to IRE 404B. We know about this. Requirement of mandatory disclosure. The prosecution must disclose general nature of evidence of other crimes, wrongs, or acts it intends to introduce at trial as required. So this is other bad acts or other crimes. Um, 
did he, you know, abuse his girlfriend or pull a knife on a former girlfriend before? And they're going to try to show that, you know, this is what he does to women that anger him in his life, whatever. Maybe that doesn't exist in this case that I know of. I'm explaining to you what other bad acts or other crimes that could potentially come in um, as evidence, usually with future hearings to make sure that they're relevant and not just propensity or not just um, overly prejudicial, but something like that, if it exists, that's what it's asking for. Do you have evidence of that state? If you do, turn it over to us. Electronic surveillance, disclosure of the defendant's status as an aggrieved person, if applicable, and copies of all records and recordings related to all electronic surveillance and set forth in writing the circumstances thereof. Were they following him from Idaho or from Washington to Pennsylvania? Were they following him once he was in Pennsylvania? We want, how did you get the surveillance? Who allowed it? What did you have to produce to them? How long did you surveil him? Who surveilled him? What'd you find when you surveilled him? Things like that. Drug tests, again, self-explanatory. Uh, provide a copy of any and all documentation generated, sorry, copy of all documentation generated as a result, I always put any and all, as a result of performed drug tests by the state agent, State's agent for drug identification purposes, including types of testing performed in this case, testing procedures, uh, regents, and or solvents used in testing, comparative analysis performed, and number of experience performed in each test. We've heard people come out of the woodwork saying, I used to do drugs with him. I used to work out with him, whatever it may be. Um, did they do drug testing when they took him to the jail or arrested him? If they did, what did they find out? Was he on some serious drugs? Was he taking medication for mental health disorders? Whatever it may be, we're going to find that out. Uh, if it exists, the defense is going to get it. I say we're going to find it out. I meant the defense team is going to be produced these documents. A lot of that stuff is is uh, would be confidential or private because their privacy in interest whenever you talk about medical documentation, unless it becomes relevant at trial, then it can become public during the trial. Subpoenas, please, please provide copies of each and every subpoena issued by the state to any person or, or entity, regardless of whether it was served or not. It's so important in the legal field to only do what you need to do. Don't have a paper trail of all the stuff you just may think about or might be an off thought or something you're just like, yeah, am I going to subpoena this person? Maybe I will. And it's like, actually, they're bad for us. I'm not going to subpoena them. The defense is asking for those subpoenas. And you better believe if they didn't end up serving the subpoena, the defense is going to go try to talk to that witness or send an investigator to try to talk to that witness. Um, in connection with this case, 18, this one's also important. And we've, we've mentioned it before. Certifications, provide verification of the higher date of all law enforcement officers that may be called as a witness in this matter or who were involved in the investigation and or arrests in this case, provide a copy of the post certification for all law enforcement officers identified above. So we talked about this. Are these officers experts? When did they take these classes? When did they get their certifications? When did they become experts? How long have they been law enforcement officers? What are their experiments now or experience? We already talked about this a little bit with the expert witnesses, right? They're going to have to produce it there. But in case anything was missed with the other law enforcement officers, we want all the certifications, all the education, all the experience from everybody that's worked on this case and everybody that could potentially be bringing evidence against Brian Koberger. All right, we got through it. And we still left another 15 minutes here for questions. All right. Does the court appointed attorney have a cap on cost of defense? LMF three. Um, it depends on the case. Sometimes they do. It doesn't seem like we've heard any of that yet. Um, and we'll see if any motions for additional funds come forward. Also, Brian's parents can chip in if they want to, they don't have to. Um, but that's something we probably won't know at this point. Stephanie, more importantly for memberships is click accept. Yes. How many likes do we have? Do we have 4,000 likes yet with 4,000 people in here? K Petty, you may have answered this, but does Jason Labar doing interviews violate the gag order set in place for BK? Probably not, unless the judge finds him to still be a part or agent of the defense team. If he's still helping the Idaho public defender, um, if he's still helping that team at all or talking to experts for them, then potentially he could be. Megan Hunter is a new member, along with Harley Ryder. That's cool. Kathy Leverton. Anna P. I tried to watch on 1.5 speed to catch up, but it was too fast. <laughs> That's my fault. Uh, would the prosecution have to disclose other witnesses, phone slash computer records if they had looked into them? I would say yes, as part of the digital media in this case, or as part of the investigation of what they did in this case. If they don't disclose them and they've already looked at them, they're not going to be able to use them as evidence. If they're exculpatory and they provide good evidence for Brian Koberger, they have to turn them over under the um, Brady 
request that they made in this. So that's why you ask almost the same thing in different ways to make sure you cover all bases. Ashley Harris, I defended you with the unibrow comment, LOL. The lighting kind of made it look like you did though. That's okay. That's okay. My eyebrows are not even, right? I mean, I don't, I don't make them even. So this is just kind of how they naturally grow. You know, asymmetry is, can still be beautiful. Kate Carpenter, you always look great and so do your eyebrows. Thank you. Uh, Susan, hi guys, newbie here. Welcome, Susan. Honestly, if you've been in the chat, you probably already know this, but they're uplifting and fun and nice and they make this process better. We deal with difficult subjects here. We talk about all the time, but we try to do it in a way that's respectful, a way that we can also have fun and learning about the processes. And so people can understand their rights. If a loved one, family member, or yourself, you're ever found in a situation on either side of this equation, which hopefully you never are. Um, but that's always important to remember. Pamela Horrigan, Tropical Gal 84, is a new member along with Edward Wood and Sherry Dennis. Uh, Vicky, will Brian Koberger be in jail until his hearing? Yes. No bond. Rebecca Motes, thank you so much for the super sticker. Carlos Jones, what's the latest in the tarot card lady? So from what I've heard so far, and we will do an update on this eventually when we get some more solid stuff is I believe TikTok banned one of her accounts and she made another account and continued to double and triple down, which is not going to look good for her in this defamation case. So it's continuing forward. She has not backed off. She has not apologized that I've seen yet. If you guys have stuff on this case, as you know, one way you can shine the bat signal is Instagram and Twitter. Tag me, follow us. Send us a DM with info on that case. It's always good to send a link. That's how somebody told me about the 10 to life. Uh, that's how somebody sent me the Kaylee Gonsalves uh, body cam video. We got it all through DMs on social media. We're growing those pages as well to make sure a lot of you can have as much access as you can. Obviously, I hate when people say this so much, so I'm with you if this is annoying. I try to answer as many of the DMs myself, literally, as I can. Obviously, I can't get to every single one on every single platform, which is why I love doing these videos because I get to so many questions. But even on these videos, I don't get to every single one. So I do apologize for that. I really wish I could. Uh, Marquetta, thank you, Peter, for always taking the time, uh, hooking us up with the latest. Big fan here since JDAH trial. Your coverage is by far the best on LawTube. Happy Friday from Sweden. Thank you so much. Shannon Ward, welcome to the members. Allie. Subpoena, if an investigator wrote any notes but never used them to draft one, can the defense request them or are they protected? So there is some arguments, and just because they ask for all this stuff doesn't mean they get it. The prosecution can object and say, we don't need to get it because it's work product, privilege, or um, if they have certain rules that protect some law enforcement notes, different states have different rules on protecting certain discovery, whether or not it's confidential or private or privileged. So they can still object to it, but this is what the defense team is asking for. This is what they want. And if an officer wrote notes, that question asked for it. So they, either, they, the, the, it puts the onus on the prosecution. They either need to produce those notes or file an objection so that they can fight about it in front of the court and the judge can make the decision as to whether or not they're entitled to those notes. They can't just ignore it because they don't think they have to turn those notes over because it's been specifically asked for. Jen Burns, does discovery always have to be that specific? Like if they miss something, it won't be turned over. You're the bomb, Peter, eyebrows and all. Thank you, Jen. Um, if you miss something, then it doesn't need to be discovered except for exculpatory evidence. If they didn't do that Brady request, the state should know they still have to request uh, or they still have to turn over any exculpatory evidence. But if they don't ask for the cell phone data, let's say, they don't have to turn it over, right? If they're going to use it at trial, it's going to be an exhibit. When it comes time to turn over your exhibit list and witness list, then you have to turn over that stuff. That's why you'll see some broad stuff where like anything you plan on using as evidence, because that can kind of cover everything. So it's like broadly specific is how you want to be with discovery. And usually especially in criminal cases and civil cases, it gets a lot dirtier, but in criminal cases, usually the state's going to turn over everything they plan on using because they don't want to create an appellate issue with a gotcha or aha movement moment or trial by ambush. Not new Chris 024. Have you ever turned down a high profile case? If so, who was it? Hope you can't tell us, uh, would you defend Koberger if you got the chance? Be honest. So I was, I almost said no to the Koberger part, but it would depend on what he said. If I would take a consult with him, I'll talk to him about it. It would depend on what he said, right? So I won't just say no to that. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I've ever turned down a high-profile case. I've turned down high-profile clients before. I don't know what the case was about because I turned down even talking to them. And I can't say specifically who they are, but they were professional athletes, not um, 
like celebrities, like actors or singers or anything like that. Uh, Rebecca Motes, thanks for another super sticker. Steven Romer Men and Lexi Holland Creel are new members. Man, a ton of new members. Lita, sending this because I look forward to your content. It's it's just, it's always coming, which makes it great. Pete is giving a an Aiden Fucci update. It's a shorter video. It's like less than 10 minutes just to bring us up to date. It deals with some similar stuff that we've dealt with in this case with sealing of documents and what it looks like if lawyers might not do it the right way. So check that out this weekend. I think we're going to post that one on Sunday. Always more content to come. Medi, I saw a report of the tarot card woman trying to claim that she's being sued because of her skin color and trying to make the whole thing about race instead of what it really is about delusional. Um, yeah, it's like she wrote these cease and desist letters. She did everything she could as the Idaho professor would be like, can you please just go away and stop doing this to me? It's messing with my family and our lives and our safety. I don't think it has anything to do with skin color. Patty. Is BK in protective custody or solitary confinement? Is it the same? What's the difference? So there are a lot of differences between between protective custody and solitary confinement. We'll probably do a video on that. It would probably be, Pete would probably be great to do a video on that. Um, we always talk about how he can like pull a specific thing like that and be professorial about it. So I'll ask him to do a video on that specifically. I do think he is in protective custody at this point. Uh, Falvo, but I don't know that for sure. So I just want to say that always. Falvo F F H. Funeral director here and pro police. However, I wish the affidavit either added or removed verbiage in DM's account in anticipation of such harsh criticism. Was there a strategy there? I mean, if you want to say strategy, I think the strategy strategy was to paint it in a picture to make it most seem like Brian Koberger was the guy that did this, which is what the, I'm not damning them for that. That's what the probable cause affidavit is for. So was there a strategy there? They were trying to produce enough evidence to get Probable cause to go and arrest Brian Coburger. That was the strategy. Serena, thank you for the super sticker. And Serena Kruger, thank you. A chocolate port lover. What's the difference between overly prejudicial versus relevant, i.e., if it shows a trend to certain behavior, is that overly prejudicial or relevant? Have a great weekend. So when you compare whether something is has its probative value, which is basically relevant, or what does it prove versus prejudicial, it can't be something that, you know, has proved that he's used this knife before, but because we're going to put it in there, it's so prejudicial that just because he's pulled his knife out before while there were people around doesn't mean that he committed these murders. So that could be way too prejudicial and not go to prove anything enough. And it's really a balancing act to the judge. You will hear this argument in every single case about at least one piece of evidence that it is more prejudicial than probative. Now, the flip side of that is every piece of evidence the other side uses is probably going to be prejudicial to your case. So it really comes down to balancing that probative value. Kathy Timmer is a new member, along with CMS. Ginny Paul. Have you seen the interview with Dr. Drew and the former FBI agent Navy SEAL regarding BK? If it's the same FBI agent Navy SEAL that was on Dr. Phil, I saw it for two seconds, but I did not see Dr. Drew. Uh, Steph sells stuff by the seashore. You're hot. This makes me think of uh, like Teen Witch. I'm hot and you're not. I think that was in 80s movies. If you want to get with me, I'll give you one shot. Top that. Do you guys remember that? Oh my gosh, that is just hilarious. I can't believe I was saying that. All right, Gina Artelona. Thank you so much for this super sticker here. And look at this. We're coming up right on one hour, just about five o'clock on Friday. P. Morris. Hi, Peter. My first chat. I don't remember where I heard this, but apparently one of the girls is said to have been stabbed 54 times and beaten in the face unrecognizable. Have you heard that? I heard some reports about um, some of us. <laughs> People are laughing at them. You remember his dance moves? Um, uh, yeah, I've I've also heard other reports uh, from what the scene was like when they showed up, and they said like the faces were preserved, like masks. A lot of that stuff is unconfirmed to me, but it's excruciating to to go to Teen Witch. Yeah, that's I think that's what I said. Uh, but if I didn't, that's what it's called, Teen Witch. Thank you. Um, whoops. T.S. Duff, it is fascinating stuff. 
Rebecca Motes, thank you for explaining everything. You're the best. I am in accounts payable, but I've learned so much. Also love 10 to life. Check her out. Uh, accounts payable. A lot to be learned there. We're going to talk about the Alex Murdoch trial when it starts on January 23rd. I think you should subscribe and hit the, or you're already a member. So you're subscribed. You've hit the bell. You're a member. Make sure to come in the chats because I want to hear about your expertise and your thoughts when we talk about all the financial crimes that could have been a motive for murder in his January 23rd trial. So make sure you're there, Rebecca. Tracy, they didn't have his DNA until the night of the arrest. There could potentially be a lot more DNA evidence, correct? Sure. Plus what all they find at his house car. Exactly. We're going to find that out. They're able to get his DNA once they arrest him as well and match it to other stuff. Uh, Ashley Dyard, such a great movie. Uh, now I know what I'm watching during pizza night tonight. I, when I first read that, I thought it said puzzle night. I was like, I love puzzle night. I love puzzle night and I love pizza night. Big puzzle guy, big pizza guy. Uh, what's your pizza topping of choice? It's probably too late in the chat, but I, I think we can get to that. Throw in your pizza topping of choice. We're winding down. I'll tell you mine. I cannot believe you watch Teen Witch. Listen, my wife, I got a wife. She loves it. And I also have two older sisters, six years and three years older than me. Okay. So I know I've watched every Say by the Bell episode there's ever been. I've watched a lot of Dawson's Creek, a lot of One Tree Hill, um, all that stuff. Okay. So I'm in it to win it when it comes to that stuff. Lamar's, welcome. All right. Here we go. Let's get some pizza toppings. Bacon, extra cheese, pineapple, supreme is good. Uh, jalapeno and pineapple. I've never heard that one before. Um, bacon, pineapple, and banana peppers. That sounds good. Pizza night here too. A lot of people just straight pepperoni. The cheese pizza kind of people are really my favorite kind of people. I had a friend, we used to call him cheese pizza because he was just always playing. My wife's a cheese pizza. My kids are just cheese pizza. That's it. Uh, pineapple, pepperoni, pepperoni, onions, broccoli, and peppers, broccoli, onions, and peppers. I can get behind veggie pizza, uh, veggie pizza, mushroom, beef, and green pepper. That sounds good. Philly cheesesteak. I've gotten a couple times. It's pretty good. Uh, ricotta and basil. That's fancy. Fresh basil. Okay. I got, I get all you hoity toity. The fresh basil only fresh, please. Uh, extra cheese. Okay. Cheese, 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 pepperoni and mushroom, extra cheese. Detroit style deep dish, salmon and anchovies. Wendy, are you messing with us? Canadian bacon and pineapple fight me. Never had Canadian bacon on pizza before. Uh, pepperoni, Canadian bacon. Simple, just pepperoni, sausage and mushroom. That's my dad's go-to. Uh, pepperoni and black olives. I can't get behind black olives. Pepperoni, ham, pineapple, ground beef, pineapple, double cheese. Pepperoni for life. Ooh, this was fun. Tons, tons of comments. Oh, salmon does not belong on pizza. All right. Mine, which I haven't seen, is pepperoni, jalapeno, thin crust. Mm, I love fresh basil. I love a lot of the stuff you guys put on there, but very cool. All right, let's get a few more questions in. Anna P., how important would it be for the defense if they don't find any blood in his car? Well, the prosecution is going to say he cleaned it. It's just it's so interesting in these cases, both sides end up having something that they can pull and argue um, when something like this comes up. So I think the defense is going to argue they searched the car, nothing in it. Prosecution is going to argue consciousness of guilt. He was wearing these surgical gloves and cleaned his car. Uh, T Sky, hypothetical. If Brian was just the driver and knew who the actual murderer was, would he want to disclose that to police or let him let that come out of trial? No, no, no. He'd want to disclose that. He'd want to flip on the actual murderer. He'd want to take a deal himself, most likely. That's most likely what happened if you were just the driver. You don't want to go away for all that. Especially you could say, he said he was just going in there to rob him. So I thought I was just a getaway car for a robber. I didn't know he was going to go do this, whatever it may be. You don't want to be an accomplice to murder if you weren't. Jeff R., can the defense throw out knife sheath if they, if the consumed all the DNA on the sheath? No. Not as long as they go through the handling of the evidence, the processing of the evidence, and all that was appropriate, the way that they tested it, um, just because they tested the only amount. Now, they can argue that to the jury sometimes, right? We weren't even able to test this. So how can we really trust the state and that they even tested or that there was anything there? So they can make those kind of arguments if, if they want to. There's still some stuff coming. So let's, this is kind of a guess. So let's, let's just wait and see what they, uh, what they say. Uh, Kate Carpenter, I took the liberty of ironing your homework. Oh, I could do it all day. 
Not new, Chris. Pineapple should not be on pizza. Very serious about that. All right. Cake or death is a new member. We've hit the, ma the hour mark. Lacey is also a new member. I'm not sure if I got that one already. All right. Uh, Crafting Mama. Runkle streaming on Hoag's channel tonight instead of his own channel. It's a Friday night frenzy since Law and Lumber is traveling. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Hit up Hoag. Watch that channel. Hit that like button. Do everything you can for him because uh, they're going through a tough time now for sure. Yeah. Can we hit 3K likes, everybody, on the way out here? Michelle L. Everybody hit the like button on the way out if you're on the stream right now and we'll hit the 3K likes. I appreciate everybody. This was really fun. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Um, we'll be back with you on Sunday with Pete. And then next week, we will get back to streaming. Appreciate y'all. Till next time, I'm out of here.